Hey there, Excel enthusiasts. Are you an administrator looking to level up your Excel game? You're in luck because today we're diving into five essential Excel tips that will revolutionize the way you work with data. From mastering basic formulas to creating stunning graphs, these tips are guaranteed to enhance your productivity and efficiency. So grab your favorite beverage and let's embark on this exciting Excel journey together. Basic Excel formulas, sum, count, average, max, and min. Learn how to use fundamental Excel formulas like sum for adding up numbers, count for counting cells with numeric values, average for calculating the average of a range, max for finding the highest value, and min for finding the lowest value. These formulas are essential for performing basic calculations and analyzing data in Excel. For example, I have a table summarizing stationary requests, and I want to use some of the basic Excel formulas on this set of data. To use these basic formulas, you simply start by typing the equal sign, then type the formula name, for example, sum, then select the range you want to use in the calculation, and then click enter. By doing this same process, you can also use the count formula if you need to count the number of requests, but when using the count formula, the selected range should only include numerical values. Other basic formulas can be applied using the same method, just type the formula and then select the related range. There is another way to get basic formula calculations quickly, which you can do by selecting the range of data and the basic formulas options will appear immediately on the status bar. You also have the option to customize which formulas appear on the status bar. Just right click the status bar and check the six formulas, average, count, numerical count, min, max, and sum. Excel tables. Excel tables streamline data organization and analysis for administrators. They enable easy formatting, summarizing, and dynamic data updates, simplifying tasks like budget tracking, employee roster management, and report generation. To convert your dataset into table form, click any cell in your dataset, then hit the Ctrl and T on your keyboard. A Create Table window will pop up with the selected range, and if your data range includes headers, you can check the box that says My Table Has Headers. You can also change the table style by selecting Quick Table Samples from the Table Style menu, and now the data has been converted into table form. The most powerful table feature that Excel offers is autofill formulas. When you create any formula for a specific cell, for example, we are going to calculate total salary, which is equal to basic salary plus overtime amount minus penalties deduction, the created formula will be autofilled to other cells in the same column. Now, when you add a new row to the table, the table fields will automatically fill to the new row and the formulas will automatically populate in the new rows as well. Excel tables allow you to add basic formulas to any of your table columns. To activate this feature, go to the menu ribbon and find Table Design, Table Style Options, and select Total Row Option. By selecting this option, you can see a new row added to the last row of your table called Total. In this row, you can select any formula using the drop-down list and select the formula that you need, like average, count, max, min, sum, etc., to apply the selected function. Sort and filters. Excel's filter and sort features equip administrators with the ability to swiftly sift through data, pinpointing crucial information for decision-making. This streamlines administrative tasks, fostering efficient workflow management and informed decision-making processes. Assume I have data for employees' salaries and hiring dates, and I want to apply sort and filter features. First, it is a common practice to convert your dataset into table form. To do so, type Ctrl T on your keyboard, as we learned in the last section. Now your employee data is converted into table form. You can use the drop-down menu for each field to select the sorting level. For employee names, the data is a text value, so your sorting options are from A to Z and from Z to A. For salary amounts, when you click the drop-down menu to start sorting, you can see it gives you the ability to sort your values from highest to lowest and from lowest to highest, which means that the sorting types are different based on the column values. In the same way, if you try to apply sorting on the hiring date field, you will find it allows you to sort from oldest to newest and from newest to oldest, as this column contains dates. Using the same drop-down menu, you will find the filter option at the end of the menu. Using this feature, you can select which department you want to filter. It enables administrators to quickly isolate relevant data, streamlining analysis and decision-making processes for efficient workflow management. Conditional formatting. 
Conditional formatting in Excel offers administrators a powerful tool to visually emphasize important data patterns, discrepancies, and trends, facilitating quicker insights and more informed decision-making within organizational operations and management tasks. Assume I have data for company shuttle buses, including the target arriving time and actual arriving time. In this example, I want to apply conditional formatting for the gap minutes between the target and the actual arriving time. First, I need to create a formula for the gap in minutes column to calculate the gap minute. This formula is calculated as actual arrival time minus target arrival time multiplied by 24 multiplied by 60. Then we need to change the field format to be general. As you can see, there are some buses that come in early, shown by negative values, and others that have delayed arrivals, which are shown as positive values. Now we will apply conditional formatting to the gap field. Select this field, then go to the conditional formatting option at the home ribbon. You will see a lot of conditional formatting options like highlight cell rule, top bottom rule, bar, color, and icons. In our case, we want to use the highlight cell rule and we will select if less than. Enter zero, then use the drop down arrow to select the conditional color green. This will highlight all values less than zero in green, which will be our indication for an early arrival. Do the same conditional formatting for if greater than zero and select another conditional color. I'm going to use red, which will be the indication for a delayed arrival. Now you can detect buses that are going to arrive early or delayed, easily visualized using conditional formatting. Charts and graphs. Excel's graphs and charts empower administrators to transform complex data into clear visual representations, facilitating quick insights, informed decision-making, and effective communication within organizational contexts. In these three examples, we are going to demonstrate the most commonly used graphs and charts. The first data set represents sales revenue, expenses, and profit on a monthly basis. We will start to create line charts for month and sales revenue. Select both fields and then go to the insert menu, then go to charts and choose the line chart. As you can see, the line chart is created to visualize monthly sales revenue. You can change the y-axis by dragging the selection on sales revenue to a different column like expenses or profit and your changes will automatically be reflected in the chart. You can also add labels to the line chart using the plus sign and select data labels. The second example is a data set for department and salary. In this example, we will apply a pie chart to see the proportions of each department as a part of the whole organization. You can also add data labels to this chart the preferred method being a percentage data callout. The final data set represents KPI achievements for each employee, and in this case, we will insert a clustered column chart to visualize all KPIs with bars for all employees. For the most effective clustered column chart, it is better to sort your data from either highest to lowest or from lowest to highest, which makes it simple to visualize the high or the low KPIs while comparing between employees. Thank you for watching this tutorial. For more great Excel tips, be sure to like this video and subscribe to Simple Sheets on YouTube.